Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca and today I'm going to go over the top five tips I teach my nursing students to help them study and pass their pharmacology exams. So let's get right into it. Tip number one, which is probably the biggest one, is to study drug classes rather than studying every individual drug. When drugs belong to the same classification, it's basically like saying they belong to a similar group or category. More often than not, you'll be asked to know multiple drugs from the same classification. For example, you may have to study three different drugs, all from the diuretic drug classification, also known as water pills. This means that all three drugs most likely function very similarly. Just for example, they might have similar actions, similar uses, and similar interactions, but maybe what sets them apart are their side effects. So I see a lot of students that study and make drug cards like this on the left. They study each of the three diuretics and all of their information separately from each other usually using three drug cards with a lot of repeating information. But if we switch to studying the drug classification, look at what happens. We can group all of the actions, uses, and interactions into one card. Now all that's left is what sets the different drugs apart, so that extra info can go right here. Now you have one card with all of your diuretic information on it. And all of this save space here means save space in here. You can use this tip not only to cut back on memorization, but definitely help with organization too. Just as a side tip, lots of drug classes end with the same suffix, which also makes it easier to study by drug class. Beta blockers usually end with OL, OL, like bisoprolol, metoprolol, and timolol. ACE inhibitors usually end with pril, like enalapril, lisinopril, ramipril, and so on. All right, moving on to tip number two, which is to condense your notes. I find that a majority of my students just write way too much on their drug cards, and I don't blame them because there really is a lot to learn about farm. But let's say you have around 100 drugs to study for your final, and you're writing down the onsets, peaks, durations, bioavailabilities, half-lifes, and so on for each and every drug. It's going to be near impossible to remember most of that information. Not to mention the amount of time that it would take to write all that up. Looking at stacks of busy drug cards like this is a nightmare to study from. Take a look at this example drug card of furosemide, also known as Lasix. It's an example of a diuretic drug. It's got a lot of good info on it and would be a pretty nice drug card to have at clinicals, but chances are you won't need all of this information on your exams. Most likely, your professor will tell you some things that they don't expect you to memorize. For example, my prof told us that we don't need to memorize every drug's bioavailability and half-life. We also weren't expected to know common doses in children for most drugs. Do I really need to write that if someone has a hypersensitivity or allergy to furosemide, then they shouldn't use it? Probably not, because that's kind of implied. So there's almost always information like this that you can remove from your notes when you're studying. And the more you condense your notes, the more you can turn this relatively busy looking drug card into something much more simple like this. Now, it might not look like a huge difference, but again, this will add up when you're dealing with about a hundred or so drug cards. Just for another example of condensing notes, when I studied for farm, I tried to take every lecture and condense it all down into one page as best I could. I think all of my pharmacology students would recognize this little white binder. It has almost all of my notes for all of the drugs taught during my farm class, including online lectures and everything. There were probably about 20 to 25 lectures in total, so I have about 20 to 25 pages which cover the entire course. I found this so much easier and much less stressful than having to look through slideshows, drug cards, notebooks, textbooks, all of that, just to find the information that I needed. Everything was in this one little binder, and now I still use this for tutoring. Alright, on to tip number three, which is to visualize your clients. This one is a lot easier if you've had some clinical experience, but can still help just by using pictures or videos off of YouTube. Some students find it very helpful to visualize a client that they've given medication to in the past. So again, if you're studying for diuretics, for example, try to visualize the clients you've given diuretics to. What are some of the signs that you noticed? Maybe they had some edema or swelling in the legs that was easily recognizable. Or maybe they had difficulty breathing from pulmonary edema. If you picture these things when you think of diuretics, it might help to remember, oh yeah, diuretics are those water pills that are used to get rid of excess fluid, like swelling and edema. And you can use the same kind of thing for a lot of different drugs. And tip number four is to make a drug list. It's super important to write down all of the drugs that were covered in your farm class in one convenient place. Lots of students come to me after exams and say they saw a drug or two that they completely missed while studying. 
I recommend keeping track of all of the drugs that get brought up in your lectures on one kind of master list that you can update each week with the new drugs that you've learned. This way, you know for sure that you're not going to miss any of them for your exam. I've made up a list of common medications that you can download for free in the video description. This list includes common brand names, drug classifications, and uses. And finally, tip number five, which is to study out of order. This one might sound a little weird, but trust me, I use this all the time. Sometimes when we study our drugs, we study them in the exact same order, day after day after day. Maybe you study heparin, you go through how it works, what it's used for, its side effects, then you move on to anoxaparin and you do the same, then warfarin and you do the same, and so on. After a while, it might seem like you're getting really good at knowing these drugs, but is that really what's going on? Or are you just getting really familiar with the pattern of it all? In your exams, you're most likely not going to see heparin followed by anoxaparin and then warfarin and so on, all in perfect order. Everything's going to be completely jumbled up from what you're used to studying. And I think this catches people off guard sometimes. So for some people, studying out of order can actually really benefit them. Try picking drugs out of your list at random to actually try to trip yourself up while you're studying. I found that students who write up drug cards have the most difficulty with this. Naturally, if you've taken the time to write up about 100 drug cards, you probably would not want to get those cards all jumbled and mixed up. So you'll probably study them in the same order every day. Again, just try mixing it up a bit, and you might be surprised by how much more you can retain. So those are some of my top tips for studying and passing pharmacology. I hope that this helped out a bit, because I know pharmacology is a topic that a lot of students struggle with. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.